subscribe to the videos. So what I am going to do, uh, and what we will do Monday, I'll make sure everybody gets it set up. Now, if you're working entirely off of your own laptop, you don't have to do this. But if you're not, you may want to set it. And you may want one on the virtual machine anyway. So I am going to uh, bring up VMware Workstation Pro. Actually, let me, um, before I do this, come on in. I'm going to magnify so it's a little clearer. So I'm going to bring up VMware. Most of you have set up VMs virtual machines before, but if you haven't, it's there. Mine is already copied. I actually have the, the virtual machine, but I think I'm the only person that has it. <laughs> so I am going to um, basically open a virtual machine. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to click on that. Oh, it's empty. Maybe I will not show. Is the virtual machine here just the hard drive? Yeah, yes. Uh, so it has to be a new virtual machine. Yeah. Okay. It should be able to just open. It didn't want to open. Let's try file. Open. It's not showing. There's nothing in there. Okay. So I think. Um, yeah. This will be a little more complicated, but not terribly so. So instead of uh, open, I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Uh, typical, I presume. Installer disk. What do you do for installer disk? Do you um, just go with what's there? Again? The installer. Oh, well, we actually aren't going to do installer disk on file. Or I will install the operating system later, right? Yeah. So I'm just clicking through this. I will guide you through these things too. Um, store virtual disk as a single file. Wait, is there an import? Uh, okay, let's cancel and see. File. I don't see one that says import. All right, so new machine. Uh, I will install operating system later because it's on that. Uh, it'll be Windows. And uh, Do I want it to be in documents? I think I want it to be on desktop. Do you, get, do you know, I pointed it to the same folder. Should I point it to a different folder? It just warns me I could be destroying something. All right. Uh, single file. And do we need, can, is there a way to point to where that disk is? Should be able to go back here and see that before. So do you don't want to go temple, go back. Oh, okay, the custom. Yeah. And you just keep on. And operating yeah. system right here. Windows. Uh, 
actually yeah, go back to do what I said before. Okay. You don't want to go like that. You should not have to do this. You should just open. So I need to probably create a folder on the desktop. Uh -huh. Yeah. We'll see if this is this hard when we do it. Uh, Are we still doing that? Well, you can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't do this. Yeah. You don't have the virtual machine. I just want to change the name of the folder. Oh, folder, new folder. Um, uh, network connection. I probably want to use that. Yeah, SCSI controller, virtual disk type is SCSI, right? Mm -hmm. uh, use an existing virtual disk. So I will kind of write up the plan for this. And it's the, this one? Yeah. Or this one? That's what the disk Yeah. yeah, the one that has everything on it. All right. All right, let's see what happens next. It's not a virtual disk. Go back and try that. Um, use an existing. Not a flaw. Not a flat. Do we want to convert it? Yes. All right. Let's see if this runs. If it does, I will, as I said, I'll write up the. That's a good sign. It should, it should be an import. Mm. It shouldn't be saying that either. No, I shouldn't be saying that. Well, this will be fun. <laughs> oh, do you want to sit there? Yeah, that's not coming back. Do you want to? Uh... So, let's count this. Yeah, why don't you see what you can do real quick, and then I will. If it doesn't work, what I will do is I will do this on Notepad. <laughs> no, it's good. This is actually has nothing much to do with SQL, okay. other than that we're setting up the, a virtual machine because we need more permissions than the underlying machine allows. So we're just actually going to create a copy of Windows that is running on top of Windows. You do not need to do this at all. SQL Server runs just fine on the underlying machine. And it will run faster if you do it that way rather than virtualize it. The only ones that need to virtualize it if you're on a Mac or in Linux. Let me export this again. Okay. So couple of things while we're here waiting. This is all going a little worse than I'd hoped, but let's do, um, I'm going to kill the, the magnifier. I'm going to bring up the uh, canvas. Actually, I, I want to go to GitHub. Uh, do you need this to be on here right now? What one? This? Do you need that? Yeah. No. Okay. So I'm going to go to uh, github.com slash spconger, and I want to show you what databases we're going to use. So when, it, when we get the virtual machine set up, we will come here to database schema, 
And what we will do is we will get um, two databases. We're going to get the Community Assist SQL, not the 2017. And I'll show you how to do this once we have the, the ability to do it. It's just a script, right? So it's just a script that will run. Uh, it'll create the database and populate it. It's an SQL script. So if you're curious about looking at the SQL, you can do that. You want to turn it to raw when you do that because there's formatting code in the GitHub stuff. And then we just can copy it. This will, as I said, it will run, it will create the script about two, three uh, minutes at the max. Actually about 20 seconds. It'll create the database, it'll create, it'll populate it. So that's one of the databases we're going to use. It's Community Assist. It's a database that is going to, it's a kind of a fake uh, nonprofit that gives money to people for short term loans. And we'll look at that once we get it up. I'm wondering, does he have, is there a SQL Server on here? Probably not. There's a MySQL. No, it probably wouldn't work anyway because I wouldn't have permissions. <laughs> All right, so that's one of the databases that we're going to use. And, and what we'll do Monday, because it looks like it's going to be moved till Monday before we get really going, is we will uh, set up the virtual machine. We will do this. Uh, and then the other one that we want is Metro Alt. But this is a zip file. Um, and what you need to do is download it if you're setting it up for yourself. And um, when you download it, what you want to do is uh, unzip it. And I will show you when you do it. But you want to unzip it to a folder, the data folder for SQL Server. And that is something like C, Program Files, SQL Server, MSQL, uh, slash data I mean it's a long path <laughs> and we will we will uh, extract it there the reason why it's not a script is that it has tables with 600 thousand records and if you were to script that with all the inserts it literally becomes a 1200 page document and it's too big right so it's easier just to take the actual data files and then attach them to the server, which we will do. Those are the two that we're going to use for the class. Community Assist is for the what I will do in class for demos, and Metro Alt will be for the assignments. Is it the same for ITC 172? Actually, for 172, we're going to use Community Assist 2017. Mm -hmm. The difference between this, this has a little bit different structure, an improved structure, but it doesn't have much data in it. It's got like five or six records in it, whereas the uh, other community assist has like a hundred records in a table. A couple of tables have over a hundred records. Uh, the other thing we'll use is the book review DB for the 172. You did the 172. Yeah, that's fine because I already have the database. Right, and you can add these to that, you know. So just to be clarifying, yeah. um, when you download or whatever, these are basically data files that we're using for the So, so the, yes, they're, they're going to create the databases that we're going to use for the assignment. Okay. So the community assist is just an SQL file, all right, because it's a smaller database. And, and it, it, you know, it, it's uh, easily movable that way. And you can just run the script and it'll create the database. With these, they're, they're the actual data files that the SQL Server creates. So we need to put them in the right place and then attach them, which I will show you how to do once I have a SQL Server that I can do it with. Um, so those will be, I mean, the tasks, which it, the goals for today originally were to get you guys uh, set up and then get these databases set up and then start talking 
about the first assignment. It may get delayed as much. I mean, I can start talking a little bit, but we're probably, today is also another day where we're just going to have to kind of tread water while we wait for things to get set up. Once we get set up, we'll move fairly quickly, maybe too quickly, you guys can let me know. But um, we will we'll get those things set up. I don't know why these don't work, but we will work on that in a moment. So the very first assignment was with, I think I'm just going to do notepad. It's, it's better than my whiteboarding. <laughs> and we'll just talk about, um, it would be nice to be able to run them. And one of the things that I will do, assuming we get set up Monday, is I'll run these. But I'll show you the basic syntax of what the first assignment entails. So I am going to, uh, I just want to change the font. I want to make it big. OK. So the first assignment is just selects. Is that big enough, or do you want it bigger from the back? A little bigger? You're OK? Are you guys OK? A little bigger? It, it's smaller than I thought it would be when I looked at that. That better? So we're going to, the first assignment is going to be basically stuff you've already done if you've done any SQL before, right? Um, we'll talk a little bit about, I am going to do like select, and this is done from memory, but I'm going to do like select person, last name, person, first name, from person, okay? That's a real typical SQL statement. I'm going to capitalize the from. It is SQL is not case sensitive. It is not case sensitive on any platform, right? So the language itself is not case sensitive. So you can do, I'm capitalizing this because I think it helps in uh, when you're writing it in text like this as opposed to in the SQL Server where everything is color coded. Uh, it helps to make it clear what are the keywords. So this is the real basic statement. Select is when you're trying to get data out of it. From is what table you're trying to get data out of. And these are table. This is person is a table in Community Assist. All right. In other languages, you need a semicolon. There. Do you need the machine? Um, I'll show you what I did. Sure, go. Let me just minimize that for a moment. So, so if I could get the virtual machine, it would help a lot. <laughs> Was that the problem? Uh, no, it doesn't really matter what settings you choose. It makes absolutely no difference for me. It's just uh, this is just uh, force of habit. Um, don't worry about that part yet. Uh, and um, I try to make this as small as possible so that this process can go a lot faster. I think there might already be one there. And that'll create that. Ultimately, this one won't, won't matter because you're just going to bypass it anyway. Make sure this is I'll have to create a disk even if you don't use it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like um, getting an a empty box or something. And then you go, oops. Which one is it? I think it was this one. Okay. 
Then you just go into your settings in the VM. Like a disk controller, it's like um, it's kind of like an XML file that has all that yeah. data for like loading everything in, whereas the other one has to meet, and then all of that will change once it's opened up and it runs and it creates the other file. So now we can get rid of the uh, the overhead everyone, right? If I could see it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in the settings and see if that last time. So now we got two. In there. Really, yeah. which is which? Not at the moment. I'm Probably the hardest too, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing that's getting me is that they're both saying they're the same size. And they should be. Because right okay. right. it might it might have gotten a, might the file might be corrected and I might need to do it again. Okay. All right, so let's go back to Notepad for a while. You guys are being nicely patient for this. Are there any questions on the basic pattern here? Now the semicolon is not necessary in uh, SQL Server, but it is in almost every other environment. Does that make sense? There are a couple of instances where SQL Server will require the semicolon, but usually it's in a complex statement where it needs to know where the first part ends. Um, generally, it, it ignores this. Yeah. Um, is that natural? Like, is that or did you put a purposeful space that can't really tell between the person last name, comma? There's no name spaces here. One of the things about um, SQL column names, and this is true in any environment, spaces are illegal. All right. So this is like camel case, or the camel, or Hungarian. Yeah, it's camel, I think. Um, you can do this, but the names. Let's see if I can get up there. You can do that, right? That is a legal character. You can do um, an underscore. But the names in the database table are actually these. And these have to match what's in the table. I just meant, sorry, thank you for fine, but like after the comma, there's like a space, and then it starts person, first name. I was just curious if, like, if it matters if you really the space. Or oh, that and space that doesn't matter. matter. I mean, it makes some sense to leave it, I think, but it does not matter. And and you could also do, if you prefer, this is perfectly legal, too. Spaces, line breaks don't matter. Some names, some spaces do. If I took this space out, it would uh, not know whether that's a select command. Thank you. All right. Notice there's a comma here, but not a comma after the last one. That's real important because 
90% of your errors over the whole quarter are going to be comments. I just thought you know. <laughs> All right, so that's a basic select. And what it would do, this would return everybody from the person table, right? And it would return only their last name and their first name. So you can list the columns you want to see, and you can list them in the order you want to see. All right, did you do it again? Want me to write it down? So I'll keep it no, that's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. If we can get this up on the real machine, it'll be better. Okay, here's a mistake. All right, so get rid of him. Right. Right. Um, what what I created was a bad VM because you see, we know where it says SCSI. We need an IDE. Oh, okay. Uh, so he has to go. He has to go, not just um, well, because it'll be in the way. So delete that from this, and now we're just gonna create a new one. That's fine. Oh, this is fine. Uh, uh, choose BIOS. Oh, okay. Um, I so think you chose can... the other. Yeah. And this is, like I said, this is just me. This is the. Make sure it has a lot. Oh, wait. There it is. There. We could we could do this now, but it's easier and simpler just to do it this way. Um, just let that go. Let that out a little bit pretty quick. And just make sure he's not powered on. So is everybody going to need to do this on Monday when we do this? No, because I'm going to take the one I just built okay. and I'll put it up. Okay. So you guys don't have to go through all these steps. <laughs> uh, set up our ram on. Let me go here. Let me delete this guy. And so long as that file is not corrupted, we should be good. ID. System. Browse for him. Yay, the Windows logo. Thank you. <laughs> so give this a minute to load, and then we'll continue with our lecture. Only we can do the database, actual database. You can see the results. We're only a half hour in. Is there like what's common for the different types of things? Like you throw it two different ways, like one across oh, versus some. It's readability. That's really all that matters is which way is more readable to you. Does that make sense? But I wanted to show you some languages it matters where you late break the lines. You can break the lines wherever you want in um, a SQL statement. Uh, you can um, space it however you want. There needs to be a space enough to so that the keywords are clear that they're keywords. But in, if you didn't have a space after a comma, it wouldn't matter. I do. I mean, I naturally space after a comma. But you don't have to. Uh, let's hope this goes fairly quickly. People at home are going to be very confused. <laughs> so we'll get just continue to where we are. The difference being that I can, um, and I will help you set up your VMs, but it should be a lot easier. We should be able to just load an existing VM when we do it on Monday. Uh, I want to do. You 
Auto size, auto fit guest. So I should stretch it, but I'm also going to Should pop up uh, bigger here in just a second. <laughs> the password in here when we get there is the same as every password, but why is it not going bigger? this set up. Now I'm going to run the VMware tools, which we will probably have to do also. Again, this is none of this is stuff you'd have to do at home. None of this is actually has anything to do with setting up SQL Server. <laughs> so you're doing it just... And just because we have to run in a virtual machine, this virtual machine has SQL Server in it. But you could just install SQL Server at home, and it would run just fine. Um, it's like in a work environment if you were to start doing SQL, like this isn't stuck you in one day. Not probably. And in fact, in most work environments, um, everything would already be installed and ready to go, right? And they would probably only give you certain restricted access. <laughs> We'll have actually more um, access than than you would have typically at work. What I'm installing right now is something to make like this pop bigger and uh, just make the virtual machine behave a little better. In my mind for you guys today, it was we were, we were just going to do this, and it should have been real easy because you usually just move the virtual machine, start it, everything runs, go into SQL Server. Uh, that was my goal for today. And see, so now it popped big, and now it's done. Uh, it needs to restart. There are days when I really hate computers. <laughs> <laughs> Been working with them since DOS 3, I think. <laughs> okay, so once I go back in, uh, we'll open up. SQL Server, I'll show you how to add. I may only do the Community Assist and show you how to do the other one next time. Because the Community Assist will take two seconds. The other one takes a little bit longer. If you want, maybe after I talk a little bit about it, I can show that one too. OK. Please do not update. Okay, good. Okay, and everybody unfortunately has to be me in the virtual machine. I didn't set that up, but all right, so I'm in here finally. I will go here when it gives me a chance. So I said, if you're doing this at home and you're not on a Mac, I would not do the virtual machine. Um, just because, come on, let me type. It's too slow. 
Okay, there's SQL Server and there are the tools. It's still getting set up, I think, as part of it. And I want the SQL Server Management Studio. So the SQL Server Management Studio is the front end. Those of you that did the 220 saw car side. It's the front end to the server. It is not SQL Server itself. SQL Server itself runs as a service in the background. It's taking a while to start. There it goes. <laughs> And the first time is slower than the other times. All right, the first time it runs, it takes it a little while to get set up. If I don't know if it matters to you, the SQL Server Manager Studio is a shell. It's the same shell as Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a programming environment. It's not the only way to access uh, SQL Server. The other way is command line, which I might show at some point. All right. So because it is not um, the server itself, you have to connect to the server. And you can, and we will do this later, you can connect to multiple servers or multiple instances of the same server in here. All right, so let me zoom, but I want to zoom from inside the, inside here, not from, um, oh, I don't want 300%. All right, is that big enough? All right, so in databases, Right now, there's really nothing there but system databases and uh, the report server, which we're not going to use. Um, so there's no, the system databases are just the things that SQL Server needs to run. I think I've explained them before. I'm only going to spend a minute or two on them. The master is the key one. It keeps track of all the users and all the databases on the server. If the master database is corrupted, SQL Server is dead. <laughs> You have to reinstall. All right, so don't mess with the master database, is what I would suggest. The model is a template. When you create a new database without giving it any parameters, it just copies what's in the model. Right? And you could, if you, I wouldn't, for this class we're not going to, but you could mess with the model. If you wanted everything, for instance, to have a log table, if you wanted everything to have, you, know, you could add things to the model. And what happens when you add things to the model is that every new database will have those things. Does that make sense? That's what the model is. MSDB, again, we're not going to mess with for this class, but it uh, is basically a database that keeps track of schedules. Because if you are a database administrator, you would want to um, schedule things like backups and log shipping and all those things, because you don't want to have to manually go in every few minutes and do that, those things. So you can, it keeps track of all the schedules and the accounts and uh, things related to automating, taking care of the database. And the TempDB we will mess with when we get to triggers. The TempDB is essentially a tr uh, basically for scratch files. Uh, it, it keeps, before it actually commits something to the database, it does a temp thing, it does all the rearranging, any kind of temporary tables that it needs are in here. Most of those temporary tables exist for literally nanoseconds. But you can create your own temp tables that can exist for a session, right? And then they'll go away. Or that can exist across sessions, but will go away once those sessions, all the current sessions are closed. Does that make sense? We'll do some things with that. So I'm going to do a new query. And this is where we're going to spend our lives, because we're going to spend it in this, where you write SQL. Um, I am going to come way down here, and I'm going to go to GitHub and get that community assist. As I said, I might do the other one later. 
but um, I'm going to do github.com slash spconger, which is my site, without the two R's. And you guys know GitHub? Whoa, what happened there? I spelled GitHub wrong. Okay. Do I want that domain? Probably not. Okay, there we go. GitHub is a place where you can store code. It also has version control. Uh, a lot of companies use it. Microsoft is even using it. They used to have their own version control system, but GitHub basically took over and then killed it on because it was GitHub was just the industry standard for storing code and doing version control. It's a complicated story. We'll talk a little bit about it. For this class, it's not so important to store things here uh, because SQL files are just text files. They're easy to move around. But if you wanted them there for some future employer to say, see, I've done some SQL, you know, it wouldn't hurt to put them up there. You can also, if you do put them on GitHub, you can just give me a link. It works really well in Canvas. You just link to your GitHub uh, repository, and I can just go there and look at it. I'll show you later when, when you guys have stuff that you can work with. Um, do I have to? All right, so I'm going to go get the community assist SQL. I'm going to uh, turn it to raw so that there's no formatting code in it. I'll just do control, control A, control C. I'm just going to paste it into SQL Server. And um, yeah, as I said, if you want to look at this, you can. There's, we will cover most of the stuff in here, but throughout the quarter. Most of uh, the script right now is probably pretty, I don't know what you call alien to you. <laughs> so I'm going to just do execute. And one of the things you see down there where it says one row affected, that means all the rows have been written. When I come over here and right click on databases and do refresh, there's now a community assist. And when I open that, it'll show me all the tables in community assist and all of the, um, well, basically all the tables. And if you click on the table itself, so let's do like donation. You can see what the columns are, right? So um, that's contact type or just donation, but anyway, but you can see the columns, and you actually, if you scroll over a little bit, because we're way over, you can also see what data type the columns are. So we go up there. It says that uh, contact T is an integer primary key. It's not null. The other one's a bar car. So uh, I will bring you all to this point on Monday. And you do not have to save the script. The database is now created. It is there. Yeah. I didn't right click it. Let me go back and move over again. To show the table. Yeah. So there's a little plus, right? Oh, okay. That's fine. So you, you can expand these things. And we will do that at various times. Did you do something before that to get all I did a refresh. Oh, okay. That's now, one of the things, and this, this is something to be aware of, I think, as you go on. Stuff that you do in the query window doesn't show up automatically over here. You have to refresh. The, they used to couple of them, but it caused so many crashes that they decoupled it. <laughs> So now the stuff that you do over here does not reflect over here. It's also possible to do something over here, and you'll get error messages over here because it hasn't updated the reference in the query window as well. So the script that we did, and, and we will be doing this again because I'll lead you guys through it. All right. The script that we did, we don't need. You can keep it if you want. But it's always available on GitHub. 
right? One of the nice things about having a script like that is if you totally screw up the database, which eventually we'll be doing things where that could happen, uh, you can always go get it again. <laughs> All right, so I, I close that, but I'm going to do another new query. Um, is the font big enough for on this? Probably want it a little bigger, right? I'm in a Zoom. The font is actually really tiny. I'm at a Zoom right now. Uh, if you go to Tools, Options, you can do things like you can go to Fonts and Colors, and I'll change, it's at 10, I'll change it to like um, 20, which will be really big in this with the zoom on. Uh, I'm going to do something else too. I'm going to go to the, um, trying to remember which ones I want. I'm going to change the size of the text editor too, which, that's the text editor. I want to change the, grid results and I'll make them at least 18. I'm going to go to all languages. Yeah, I know that. Um, and I'm going to enable line numbers. And again, I will lead you through all this if you want to do it. So it's really big now. Uh, unfortunately, in order to get that one thing, I'm going to exit and restart. <laughs> there it is. And the reason I'm restarting this is some of the changes that I did won't take effect unless I restart. All right, so I'm going to connect. All right, and new query. So we're back to queries. We have community assist here. I will do one other thing with community assist before we start doing queries, I guess. This can be useful. Um, I don't know why it's trying to expand. There's nothing in there. Don't freeze up on me. Oh, the database does not have any this. This is a normal one. You just say yes. Yes, you do want the things that you need for a diagram. I'm going to create a diagram so you can see the layout of the database. So I'm going to create a new database diagram. And I'm going to add all of the tables. So this is really big. Uh, I'll kind of walk through it. This is useful when you want to know where things are, because you didn't make these databases, right? I did. So and my questions will often ask you to do something, and uh, that means you have to locate where it is. So there, right at the heart of the table is a person table. So the person table keeps track of the person, last name, first name, their email. It has their password, which is hash. It has an entry date and a password seed, which I found a better way to do that, but it's there. There's a, whenever anybody logs in, which we're not going to do, um, it, log, it keeps track of that. Um, it has a contact list. These are all phone numbers, but it tells you what kind of, there's a table that tells you what kind of number it is. Is it a home phone number? Is it a work number? Is it in a personal cell, et cetera? Uh, persons can donate, right? So the, the person table keeps track of all people, whether they're donors or they're asking for help or they're employees. They're all in the person table. So that makes sense because they're all people and they all have the same basic fields. Uh, so this is the donation, gives you the date and the amount, and there's a confirmation code. Um, an employee is a type of person, right? So this is an employee, it has their person key, which ties it to the person, the hire date, and the salary. And uh, there's a, a 
a position table that describes the different positions, and then there's a linking table that describes what position they have, because some people have more than one position. Some employees do more than one thing. That's why that. There is uh, an address table, and it's separate from the uh, person table because, particularly donors, some of them have multiple addresses. Right? So it's possible for a person to have more than one address which means that you have to break it out into its own table. If you haven't done relational modeling at all, I mean, you can look at this, but part of what relational modeling is is you keep breaking information up into smaller and smaller tables, and uh, then you relate those with key and foreign key. When we start doing joins, that's where you write queries where you try to bring data from multiple tables into the same result. Um, there are grants, which I think are down here. People make a request for a grant. Uh, the grants are reviewed, and uh, there can be comments on the reviews. There's also a list of types. This is a lookup table for what kinds of types of grants there are. So that's sort of the structure of this. Uh, again, I'll help you do this, create this diagram, because business rules, by the way, isn't part of the table proper, and it's more for you guys. It tells you things like that every password is the last name with the word pass on it, right? Because you, when we, I'm going to show you in just a second, but when you actually see the password, uh, it's hashed. You can't tell what the password is. So you have to know what they are if you're going to log in or do anything like that. So I just de facto made every password last name pass. Um, it also tells you different things about how the business runs. So there's some rules up there that just to help you understand the database. Okay, so I'm going to save this um, just so it's there in the future. And diagram zero is fine with me. And then we'll go back here, and we're back to where we were in Notepad <laughs> 30 minutes ago. All right. I would have done all this introduction anyway. So I'm going to do, let's do select pers person last name, uh, person first name. And again, it's not case sensitive, but that capital I bothers me. I'm going to break it because it's, um, now this one won't work. Anybody know why? No, it's fine. It, there's nothing wrong with the statement itself. I just am not. Notice over here, it says master. We're not in the community assist database. You need to set that context. And the way to do it with SQL is to say use uh, community assist. So if I do that and execute it, um, down here it says that the command completed successfully. Okay. Well, this one has to have the underscore because that's the actual name of the table database. Okay. Then I can run this. And notice you can run one statement at a time. You can write them all in here. But you can, if you select a statement, it'll run only the one you select. And if you really hate going up and clicking that little green arrow, F5 also runs it. All right, so this is everybody's first and last names. And if you look over here, it'll tell you how many. There are 129 people in 129 rows. Okay. And again, in other environments, uh, there would be semicolons there. And it, it really, it just ignores whether there's semicolons here or not. But in, in, if you go into MySQL or Postgres or Oracle, it will not ignore this absence of a semicolon. Here it does. All right, I'm going to show you uh, select asterisk from a person. You guys know what the asterisk does there? Most of you do. Yeah, it's select all. It's a, basically a while, just says select everything. So if you go here, instead of just having 
the last name, first name, you have their key, their email. You can see what their password looks like when it's hashed. Um, their entry date. And then the person's seed, which is, the seed is basically just a random number that is concatenated with their password in order to make it so that you can't have a dictionary attack. You guys know what a dictionary attack is? They just go through the dictionary and hash every word and see if it matches your password. <laughs> Yeah. I can show you. There's actually, um, we won't do it right now, but uh, in Community Assist, under Programmability, under Functions, Scalar Valued Functions, I have a hash password. <laughs> um, I'm, this is not, I'm just going to uh, script this. The, uh, assignment That'll show you. Doing all this, but just in the employee uh, well, table, right? Well, actually, what we'll be doing this for for the assignment is in the Metro Alt database. So it's a different database. I just got to go back to where I was. Okay, but if you want to look at that, there's there's a built-in function in SQL Server for hashing, and then you can choose the type of hash. I used SHA 5, 5 something, 512 or something like that. <laughs> um, so I am going to, let's do a couple other things here real quickly on selects. If you don't like, I'm just going to copy this one real quick. If you don't like the field names the way they exist in the uh, table, you can alias things. Um, so I'm going to break that line so it's all on screen. And if I do that, you'll notice that in the results set, it now says last name, first name, right? And if you want spaces, you could do that too, but you need to put square brackets around these. Square brackets are because um, spaces are illegal in field names. But you can kind of fake it by, if you put it in brackets, it says treat it literally and treat it as a whole. So when I run that, notice it has the space there. So you can alias things if you want. And it's only for the result set. Anything you do with the select does not affect the underlying database. It just is pulling data out and creating these result sets that you can do things with. So that's, um, that's aliasing. The other thing about aliasing is that the as is utterly optional. You can leave the word as out and it behaves exactly the same. It's probably good to use it in that it is, makes it clearer what's going on, <laughs> but you don't need it. So notice that we've got, I have Anderson as a first name, but then the next name is Zimmerman. I'm gonna show you how to order these. So I, I'm actually, I'm just going to, I think go up to here. I'm trying to do these fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something to this. I'm going to add an order by uh, person last name. And that will sort it by last name so that it's in alphabetical order, right? You could also, if you wanted a secondary sort by first name, I could do person first name. And if I run that, the first names will be, it really doesn't affect anything until you get to like Brown, you know, somebody that has the same last name. Is there any others? Elliot, there are two Elliots. So now it, these are in alphabetical order as well. 
right, so it's a secondary sort. This is the first sort. So it'll sort by first names first. Where this is really useful is when you're actually dealing with the dates, right? right? And you want to sort by year and then by month and then by, you know, then you're going to having multiple, but first you sort by the year. So everything will be in a particular year and then you can sort the months uh, by that. Uh, yeah. You can. Is there an ascending and descending? Yes, there is. There's a going there next. <laughs> so if you wanted to go in reverse order, um, you can do DSC. And what that'll do is it'll go backwards. So now it will be Z to A. This is still a to Z, right? If you want it to be reversed also, you'd have to do another DESC on it. DESC is for descending. You, there is an ASC, um, which you could put here. All right, you can tell blue is a keyword. So, but you never have to do it because that is the default. It's kind of like as you don't have to do it. It's an optional keyword. But if it's if you want it to be really clear that one is ascending and one is descending, you can do that. Okay. So most of this shouldn't be too new, is it? So there's a couple other things. I'm just trying to think of what's in the first assignment. Um, I wish you guys could follow along and do this with me, but I will post this code. Uh, probably what will happen on uh, Monday is we will get set up, and then I'll just let you work on the first assignment where I can circulate and help you. So I'm going to do a couple of other little additions here. Now they're drilling out there. <laughs> I want to show you some criteria. I don't know if I can close this entirely, but if it does close, it's all right. It's a little warm in here, though. All right, I'm going to add another clause. They call these clause. Is I'm going to do a where clause. And I'm going to say where person last name equals, and let's just do a last name. What last name do I want to do? Uh, well, we did. We had two Elliots. Let's do Elliot. Okay. The where clause, everything that we've done until now returns all the rows. The where clause limits what rows you are going to come back. So we're going to get the first name and last name from person uh, where the person's last name is Elliot. Order by doesn't really make sense here. Although we could do because there's two, maybe just order by uh, person first name. I'll leave the ascending on there, although that's the default. So I'm going to do F5, and we'll get just the two, right, Elliot? And these two are in alphabetical order. I don't know if they are the underlying table. You could take that order by alphabet. Couple of things. When you're querying character types or dates, you have to use single quotes. And they have to be single quotes. Double quotes don't work. Okay. Double quotes have different functions. I'm going to change tables a little because I want to show you a little bit of other. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to do the asterisk from donation. So first I'll just show you what's in donation so you can see kind of what that table looks like. 
There's the key, which is just an op, you know, arbitrary number. There's the person that made the donation, so this refers back to the person table. There's the date that the donation was made. There's the amount, and then there's this uh, confirmation code. So what I wanted to show you is that you can do, as well as equals, right, something you can do greater than, less than, all of these kinds of things. So we'll use the donation amount for that. Um, I'm going to say where donation amount is greater than, let's see what we got greater than 500. So just run that. And there's quite a few greater than 500. There are, if you go over here, there are 21 of them. So let's say greater than 1,000, just to make it a little few less. And there's, there's less of them that are greater than 1,000. Okay. So you can do greater than. Um, you can do less than. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it as less than. Um, but let's do it as less than 100. Oops, not a comma. So the smallest donations. So there are a few that are less than 100. So 50, 25, 50, 50. Um, you could also say less than or equal to 100. And that gives us a couple of hundreds in there, too. So the, the ones that you can do, and this is a comment, by the way, dash, dash. <laughs> uh, you can do greater than, less than, um, equal to, of course. And you can do uh, less than and equal to, greater than or equal to. SQL Server allows you to do um, not equal as well, but that is not ANSI standard. If you wanted to do not, it's usually the word not. Okay. Oh, the dashes? Yeah. I should probably make a space there. The dashes mark it as a, a, a um, comment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, can you sort by person key, like repeating it, like a, to see if one person did more than one? Certainly. Um, so. Well, if we were to do um, select person key from, do you want to know what the amounts that they donated each time? Um, from donation. Uh, so there's a couple of things, because we, we don't know ahead of time which ones we want, right? Order by person key. Uh, that should give us. So let's do F5. So notice there are all these threes, right? And two sixes and three elevens. I think actually, because of the way I was entering data, the first people are the ones most likely to have entered more than once. <laughs> well, you could see their name. All right. Which we'll have to do joins, which is about a week away. Because you have to join tables to do that. Because there's no name in the donation table. Is that like, for example, like if you were wanting to like some confidentiality? Like, without well, you could. Or if you're just doing uh, data aggregation kinds of things, uh, you don't necessarily need to see their names. Um, one of the things you could do, if you wanted to see unique donors, um, this is actually, uh, let's, I'm going to copy this and make a change. So if you want to see only distinct donors, first of all, we need to get rid of donation amount. And I'm going to put the word distinct in front of it. So notice we have three threes, but when I 
do this, three will only appear once. One way to look at that, if I do this, um, the number of rows is 48. And if I do this, the number of rows is 41. So the repetitions are not a lot. But there are things where you need to know distinct, you know, um, like when they do, um, sometimes when they want to know how many students are in a program, they want to know how many unique students are in the program, not how many are in each class, right? So this is, distinct allows you to do that. The reason I took out the donation amount is distinct only works on the row. It doesn't work on the field. So it isn't just on person key. So if there's any variation, if the same person had two different donations, it would return it because it's a unique row. Does that make sense? We'll play with that a little bit more. But distinct returns unique rows, not not unique columns. Yeah. So if you did, um, if you still brought in the donation amount, but you only had like person number three listed twice, instead of saying 500 three times, would it add up? If, if the same three person three did 500 each time, yeah. did they do it 500 each time? Yeah. So then it actually would only return one. Oh, okay. It would only just show 500. But right. If, if it was two different amounts, would it? It would show them twice. twice. Okay. It wouldn't add it up for you, like summarize? No, we will get there. There are there are functions for count. So like if you wanted to count how many times each person did it, you could do that. Uh, there are um, some average. There are actually well over a dozen aggregate what they call aggregate functions that allow you to summarize things like that. Um, if I did the distinct here, which I'm going to take out in a moment, but so. Three only three appears twice because once was 500, yeah, and once was a thousand, and six because they were different numbers they appear twice. It's actually one of the things to know about when you're doing this kind of thing. If you're doing kinds of uh, analysis and summary, you have to be real careful what you're doing because you could get some very strange false numbers depending on how you're doing the calculation. Does that make sense? Because we've left out a $500 donation for three. Uh, you wouldn't want to do distinct with that. You also need to be real careful what values you include because sometimes things get duplicated. For instance, some people have two addresses. So if you include the address of the donor when you do a join, which is later, you'll get, um, say that three had two donation, two addresses, you would get six donations if you included the address in the join. And, and they didn't make six donations. It's just that it matches it to each address. Uh, you have to be real careful of that because you're suddenly doubling the amount that that person gave. Uh, and it's not true. <laughs> so there are there are things to be careful of in that, which we'll look at more when we do joins and things. But. So we've done where, I want to do a couple other wares here. I'm going to get the distinct out of that because that wasn't the point of that one. Um, if you wanted to do a date, um, I'm going to do select star from uh, donation. And we're, I think we're getting close to having, so I'm doing that again just because I need to refresh myself. And notice we have these dates, and the dates are unfortunately very similar. Uh, they're mostly August and September. There are a couple in, in two. And these are date times which does have some effect on things, too. So I have a couple on, let's do the 5, September 5th. If I do, whoops.
if I do this for donation date equals and um, so that's uh, nine five twenty fifteen is that right um, and you can enter a date like that even though it's like this down here but I'm not going to get any results anybody know why I don't have any results what Date format? No, it's not the date format, although in some environments it would be. Like in MySQL, you have to enter the date. To remember. The problem is that it's date time. The data type is date time. And if you enter the date without the time, it decides that the time is 00 zero colon, zero, zero colon, zero, zero colon. There's no, nothing was ever was posted at exactly midnight. So what you could do to make this work, um, you could do a greater than 9.5 and let's, let's break the line here just for okay and less than let's just do 9.6 Okay, and that would give us, oh, that's because I have to say, and donation date. It gives us those two. So it's, it's greater than, because it's more than that date at midnight. Now there are data types when we start creating tables. There is a date data type that doesn't have the time, but there's also the date time format, which is what this is. You're looking things up and you just put 9515. Would it recognize that, or does it have to be 2015? Try it. I actually don't. That's a good question. I think it will recognize it. Yeah, it works just as well. And you can also enter the date just as is if you want. And if you entered it exactly, but are you likely to know the minutes when you're searching for this? I don't know. Um, there's another way to do this. And then we will look at, I think, one other thing, two other things, and then we'll be done. Um, normally what I would do is we'd set up and I'd get you started working on it, but I think Monday is when we do start working on it. So instead of doing uh, greater than, I'm going to say donation date between um, these two dates. And that actually will work, except we might get, now we just get the two because there's nothing on 916. It would only bring you, again, because it's date time, it would only bring you something on 96 if it was at midnight. <laughs> Between is an easier way to do that, I think. Um, so if we're only using the 15 instead of 2015, how will it tell between like that and like 1915? So it will assume 2015. If you want to make it 1915, you need to do the four-digit date. I think there are, um, if you go online, there's documentation. One of the things I'll just mention too, that one of the things that differs most among different databases is how they treat dates. SQL Server is fairly flexible. You can enter your date format however you want. Uh, I could do dashes there instead of uh, slashes. I mean, it would accept it. I could enter it year, I mean, this way, it would be just fine. In um, MySQL, you pretty well need to enter it in the right order, I mean, in the standard order. Uh, in Oracle, you can't, you don't just put a date in single quotes, you have to put the word date in front of it, so it identifies it as a date. <laughs> so, I mean, there are, there are lots of different ways of handling dates. The next assignment, which we're I'm not going to go into now, but we'll look at some functions that will extract parts of dates 
Like if you want to know just the month, you can. There's a function that will extract the month, the day, or the year. You know, and do all of those different things. Um, I'm going to go back to just do two quickie things here, and then I'll show you a couple of other things. So I'm going to use the um, person table again. I'm just going to do, let's do star from person. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say where person last name like. And I'm going to put quotes, and I'm going to do an L and a percent sign. Anybody have an idea what that might do? With yeah, any word. It's basically any name that begins with L. So I have quite a few of them. I have one, two, three, four, five. So anyone whose last name begins with L. This is like searching for a pattern. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's any other leak things that I could do. I'm just looking for some patterns that I could do. I'm going to try a D. All right, so there is a D E N, and there's a D A N. What I want to do is we'll do D. And then I'm going to do an N, and then I'm going to do a percent. Uh, if I can find my percent sign. What this would do is it has to start with D. It has to have an N somewhere in it. All right, so basically what we're going to eliminate is Dexter and Davidson. So everybody starts with D and everybody has an N. Oh, this has an N at the end, which works. <laughs> so they have an N in there, right? The percent sign is any number of characters. There's also, um, we could do it like this, and it would also work. The underscore is for a single character. So what this means is that there has to be no more than one character between the D and the N. Right. So single character is for uh, one this, this is an underscore, and the percent is any number of characters. Like, this looks really powerful, but I'm, just as a warning, if your database actually had a lot of data, it is an incredibly inefficient query. If you had like a, a billion records, this could take hours. <laughs> so it's not the best way to do this. There are some indexes and things that you could use that are faster. Uh, that being said, if it's a reasonably small database and something that allows you to search for patterns, so if you need to find, you know somebody out there had this D and it had an N in it, I will see what would I come up with and maybe we can eliminate it from there. Um, it does work fairly well for that. Okay, couple last things, and then I will post this online, as I said, on the blog. There's the video, which at the beginning is very chaotic. This is typical what happens with these. So I'm going to do um, select asterisk from person address. All right. And partially because there are a couple of points I can make here. And then we're done, I think, with most of what's asked for in the assignment. All right. So one of the things um, the address keeps is some people don't have apartment numbers, and so you have nulls. You guys know what nulls? It's an unknown value, right? It's not a zero. It's not a, um, an empty string. It's, it's unknown. When you're doing math, if you have nulls, they're left out. Like if you do a sum and you have nulls in some of the number columns, it leaves them out. Uh, it's important to know kind of what the effects of nulls are. 
when I do, um, if I want to look at all the people that have apartment numbers, I'm going to say select star from person address where uh, person address apartment is not null. <laughs> All right, you can't use equal. Nothing is equal to a null. I mean, there is no e equality there. Nothing is greater than a null. You know, you can't use any of the comparators, comparative operators. You use is or is not. So this will show all of the people who have apartments, right? So everybody in this list has an apartment. If I wanted to show the ones that don't have apartments, do exactly the same thing as if we get rid of the not. The, the important thing is to know that you have to use the word is with nulls and not equal. It won't throw an error if you use equal. It just won't give you anything. Right? It'll just give you no answer. And the not can also be used in other things. So notice that there's most of these are Seattle. I think so. I'm going to do select star from person address where, and this is a little bit weird because the not needs to go in a little bit different place. We're not person. Address city equal Seattle. So this is going to be everybody that's not in Seattle is what we're going to get. So notice there Kent, Bellevue, Shoreline, etc. Puyallup. So is there anything that I'm forgetting that's in the assignment? If there is, we could certainly do it next time. We've got order by, we've got different wares. Um, we've got the wild cards, dates. Numbers, uh, like when we did up here, numbers don't need to be quoted. It actually will work if they are quoted, but they do not need to be. Uh, but uh, text like this does need to be quoted in single quotes. Ascending is optional. And we did a little bit of aliasing at the first. We could have aliased all the way down. Is there anything I forgot? I don't know. I think we're going to assume not. Um, I'm going to do, we've got just a few minutes left. I'm going to show you how to bring in the one for the assignment. So I'm going to go back to GitHub. And there is a blog on this about how to do this, actually. But I'm going to, um, I'm going to get the uh, Metro Alt log zip. And it can't show the files, which is fine. So I'm going to download it. And I'm going to save it. All right. And I'm going to open the folder. And what I want to do in this download, this folder, is I want to right click and extract all because it's a zip file. And where I want to unzip it is. Um, this PC, and I'll lead you through this next time too. Uh, local disk C, program files, SQL Server, uh, MSQL, uh, that's the wrong one, bottom one, MSQL Express, MSQL, uh, data, and it's going to say continue, and that's fine. And that's where we want to go with this. That's the path. Program file, SQL Server, 
MSQL 13 SQL Express MSQL data. I'm going to extract. And it goes to that folder. Notice I got community assist, community assist log. And now I've got Metro Alt and Metro Alt log. Right? Every database file, every database has two files minimum. It can have more, but it has two files minimum. It has a data file and a log file. So it needs to have those two things. Now, having put it there, and I will say, and probably say again, in real life, the default data folder is the last place you want to put your data files. Right? Just letting you know, but it works real well when you're playing with it for learning. Also, your log file should never be on the same physical disk as your data file. <laughs> but we'll leave it there. Um, and the reasons are for the log keeps track of all your transactions that occur before um, as you go on since your last backup. If your log file is on the same file as your data file and the this crashes, then you're just screwed. If it's on a different thing, then you can restore all of the transactions that are past the backup. Right? So for us, it doesn't matter, but just in real life, that needs to be set up differently. All right, having done that, then I'm going to go back to SQL Server, Databases. I'm going to right click. And I do have a blog, as I said, which I'll point you to, and we'll also walk through this together. Um, attach. Database files are attached to the database server. If you try to move them when they're attached, it'll give you errors. It won't allow you to move them or copy them when they're attached. So if you want to move the files, you have to detach them. And if you want to use the files, you have to reattach them. So there's a dialog box here for attach. I'm going to do add. And it goes by default to that data folder. You could browse if you need to. I'm going to say Metro Alt MDF. I'm going to do OK. It shows me the two files, Metro Alt uh, you know, the MDF and LDF. The LDF is the log. I'm going to do OK. And now over here, I have Metro Alt database, and it has all of the tables and etc. So I will lead you through doing that again. This is if you're moving the files. Two ways really to set it up. You can do the script. I, there's multiple ways. You can do the script like uh, we did with Community Assist. That works really well if all you're passing is the structure or if the data isn't too intense. You can move the data files like we did here. Or you can back it up, and you can actually restore from a backup to an empty database. And, and it will populate it. Those are the basically the three ways of moving them. So you guys have questions? I wish you could have followed hands on. But we'll be there. I trust David will have it there by Monday. <laughs> if not, we can download it from the server, but it take the bandwidth isn't good. It would take us hour, uh, two hours maybe to do it. So, all right. So I'm going to copy all of this. Um, and I'll put it on the blog. And if you want to look, so. Real quickly, I'm going to get out of full screen mode. I'm going to kill the video at this point. <laughs>